If you're currently paying for Evernote, you may have seen three new features added to your app. Today, I want to show you more about the AI Meeting Notes Beta, a refreshed insert menu, a slash command menu, and a citation generator. Also, I recently posted a video about how I use Evernote to store lists that help me stay on top of things. I asked what lists others keep and how they use them. I got a whole lot of feedback and I want to share some of it with you. Hi, I'm Dave Edwards, a certified Evernote expert. What that means is, among other things, I get to try out new features before they're released to everyone so I can show you how they work. I hope that you subscribe to the series of videos so you don't miss any of them. And if you'd like to receive my free weekly newsletter and a free copy of my ebook, top 20 research tested productivity tips you can get them both at daveedwardsmedia.com contact the features i'm going to show you today have only been rolled out to paid users it's part of version 10.159.4 so always make sure that you're using the right version and these are in beta form so we may see some uh, adjustments over time so the feature ai meeting notes uh, is now inside of Evernote, uh, the app that you use every day. It is gradually being rolled out for paid desktop users, and there's a compatible version uh, for mobile users. And basically, it allows for real-time recording and transcription for meetings. So let's do this. Let us Click on audio recording, and then you'll notice that it's asking you, uh, it's giving you two options, in person or remote. So let's focus on this. Um, if you want to use your external microphone or use both internal and external, you'll want to click on remote. If you just want to use an external microphone, like for example, if you are uh, meeting with someone and you're just going to do an in-person recording, this just uses your external microphone. In-person can also mean recording, you know, not only recording off your built-in microphone or a microphone connected uh, by USB. So in this, in this case, uh, let's use the external microphone and so then uh, your recording will take place. You can see how this is working here. Uh, let's let this uh, keep recording while I tell you a couple of other things about this. Here's a really important thing. The time limit for recording a meeting is one hour. And one of the things that came up on a recent call that we had with the Evernote folks is that if your meeting runs longer than an hour, you know, like a minute two or something like that, and uh, you hit stop, uh, your meeting is gone. It, it won't be there. So not a great feature, but I'm cautioning you uh, that if you are in a meeting that is uh, going over an hour, at some point you want to stop it and start a new audio file. You can, by the way, also uh, start this feature uh, from the slash command. But all right, so now we've We've been recording. Now it has downloaded our audio as a file inside the note that we have created. And then we can transcribe the note. You notice there's a drop down menu here. And here is the option to uh, identify the speaker. Do you want to be able to identify who said what in the conversation? As it says, it's going to take a little bit longer if you do that. So you can toggle that on and off. Well, let's leave it on and let's let it go to work and transcribe our meeting. And there it is. Here is the transcript of the meeting, which you can copy and then paste somewhere else if you want. Uh, using the AI feature, it'll also give you a summary of the meeting. And there it is in uh, in easy to read bullet points. I've been playing around with this feature. In fact, on our last call with Evernote experts, I used this to uh, record the conversation. I know a lot of other experts did it too, as this was rolled out to us, and I found it amazingly accurate. Uh, the summary was good. I was able to edit a few things in here, but if you paid attention to what I was saying, you'll find the summary uh, to be pretty accurate. So that is the AI meeting notes feature. 
there have been some changes uh, in the insert menu. Again, this is uh, rolling out now for paid users. The problem that Evernote had was that the insert menu got very, very long. <laughs> As you can see, man, there's a whole lot of stuff in this menu. And the new design uh, gives us a, a, a few other options uh, for how we can best use the insert menu. Uh, the best one would be the search option here. If I wanted to quickly insert an image, well, I can just type in a few letters and it will give me uh, the word image. You can also set favorites. Uh, you know, these are all marked essentials and textiles, whatever else. But if you are, uh, if you use bullet lists a lot and you come over to the right and you save it as a favorite, now it will be in your favorites list on top of the insert menu. This would also be a, a, a good time if you're doing a lot of recording, like I had demonstrated before, you could favorite this item as well. I like this because it certainly will make it easier for me to find something either through search or by uh, marking this as a favorite rather than having to scroll up and down every time I want to find something. There's also an update to the slash command. There's more options in here as well. If you type the slash command, this list is also getting longer. Uh, you can do a whole lot right from the slash command. Remember when it was only like, you know, four or five items? Well, now it's a lot longer. Uh, this includes uh, text formatting. Not only can you do the, uh, the styles, the, the size of the texts and, and bolding and alignment, but uh, if you scroll all the way to the bottom, you'll notice that you can also change uh, color of your text from this menu. Another thing you can do is right from this list, if I want to create a, uh, a bullet list and I just type in bullet list, just type in a couple of letters, it will now prompt me to create that bullet list. And you don't have to be as accurate with these names as, as, as you think you do. Uh, you know, if I want to create a new event, uh, I can also type in calendar and it will bring up event. I mean, it, it's intuitive enough to know, yeah, this guy doesn't know the word event, but he knows the word calendar. Or uh, if I want to uh, type in uh, a URL to something, I type in URL and it prompts me to insert a link here. Pretty cool, huh? And finally, uh, a new satellite site feature. This is another feature that's not yet built into the Evernote app but you can go to the website where this resides, which is evernote.com slash citation hyphen generator. You may not need this every day of your work life, but if you are a student, you may really love this feature. It allows you to generate a citation for any kind of an article or book that you are reading and you can choose from a number of standards that uh, are typically used for citing reference works. I used to teach a college level course in professional communications in which we spent an entire class period teaching the rules of APA citations. I remember that. I also remember another faculty member carrying a, like a 300 page book around with her, which had all of the citation rules and she would stress this for all of her students. Well, you know what? Automation has come and now you can use the citation generator. You can also pick what language you're using. So if I was to select a, a title, uh, let's, uh, let's use the David Allen book, Getting Things Done. And it's a book and I wanted it English. And now, look, here it is. Click on that. And here's the way you would cite that work in a paper. And of course, you can copy that. You can download it. Uh, you can save it in Evernote, whatever you want to do. I like these features. And on a recent Evernote experts call with the Evernote team, they previewed other things that will be rolled out as part of version 11 which will be released soon. 
They told us, by the way, that they're testing a lot of new features and making sure they play well together so they can roll out their first major update to Evernote in quite a few years. I recently posted a video about how I use Evernote to store lists that help me stay on top of things, from books and movies uh, that I want to read and see, to things that I want to buy when it's time to buy groceries. And I asked for your feedback. Anita wrote, Hi Dave, I have a grocery list, a packing list. I use a task symbol to add items. I use this format, add a colorful symbol, a heart, in my note title to highlight these notes as important. Hey, that's a great tip. I really like that idea. Uh, I'm not exactly sure what you mean the task symbol. Do you mean a tag symbol? Either way, good idea. That's a great way to organize your lists. Uh, Ron wrote, I use Evernote like you describe it, but I wish they would add the ability to sort lists. I have to periodically paste mine into a spreadsheet to do the sorting. Yeah, I agree. That would be a great feature. In fact, I think uh, a lot of users would appreciate it. And John wrote, which of your lists work backwards? That is, check an item if it's needed. All right, I, I, so let me explain what that is in case you didn't see the video. I was describing the fact that I have a grocery list, but instead of listing things that I need to buy, uh, we've compiled a list of kind of the things that we regularly buy and put a check box next to each of them. So then when we need them, we check the box. And then once we purchased it, we uncheck the box. We really only do that for the, uh, for the grocery list, but we do find it helpful. I'm always interested in your ideas of how you use Evernote and your feedback. Post your comments below, or if you really want to get my attention quickly, just send me an email at daveedwards at outlook.com.